Welcome to Tips from Trestle. This podcast is dedicated to discussing the senior living industry with a unique focus on food, hospitality, and leadership. I'm your host, Aaron Fish. As a 25-year veteran of the hospitality industry, I've focused my work on creating exceptional experiences for the customers we serve. My goal for this podcast? Educate, inform, and inspire leaders in senior living to bring food and hospitality to the front of mind in our industry. Let's bring the innovative and passionate spirit of hospitality to everything that we do. For the residents, families, guests, and employees we serve each and every day. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. Today on Tips from Trestle, I'm joined by Eric and John Peterson. Founded by Eric Peterson, Senior for Senior started in 2019 and is a nonprofit corporation that enables meaningful connections between students and senior members of our community seeking opportunities to serve one another. John Peterson is a board member and president of the organization. Their goal with Seniors for Seniors is to connect the young with the young at heart. Eric and John, thank you so much for joining me today on Tips from Trestle. Thanks for having us. Yes. Absolutely. So I'd love for you guys to tell our listeners a little bit about um, how uh, Seniors for Seniors came about, how exactly you go about connecting uh, your, your volunteers with seniors and communities, and just kind of give us the overview of that. All right. Back in the, when I was a caregiver and a QMAP and a senior community, earlier on, I was doing was with this, something was missing, and I can't really put a point on thing or was missing. But I, as I've written the trust of the residents and get to know them better, we would ask questions and get answers back. You know, I found they were missing, they were missing connections. They were around people on the community or other staff members, but they were missing people in the community, the church members, to their neighborhood, to their work associations. And I kind of, kind of kind of go to the airport. You go to the airport and maybe on a lot of people, but then they engage with anybody. And you kind of make me feel lonely. And I wanted to do something about it because I know for me, I'm a very sociable person. That was very, I found that would be very difficult. And I'll have John talk about how it kind of came from there. Okay, so when Eric observed that these uh, these people that he was caring for were experiencing these challenges, and I think we can all relate to the idea of being in a crowd, but still feeling alone. Absolutely, and, yep. So, and a lot of the value that these older adults had in their careers and when they, before they retired, and uh, went into the senior living centers or were more isolated in their own homes, um, the, a lot of those, those interactions and that the meaning in their lives, particularly the parts tied to their career, kind of went away. And so these, these seniors, he, he saw that there was a lot of feelings of isolation, loneliness, and then the bad parts about it, sometimes that leads to depression. And we were mm-hmm. shocked to learn that one of the common causes for death for adults over 70 is suicide. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So these are just challenges that, that, that build on one another. And as Eric said, he wanted to do something about that. He had also been aware previously, but became even more aware that our youth face similar challenges, but are created and uh, result from different, uh, for different reasons. But still, many of them, they may have a thousand friends on social media, but mm-hmm. still feel isolated and lonely. We hear commonly about this, our high school age kids being, uh, feeling, dealing with depression. And too often we hear about suicides occurring as well. I have a friend that worked in the school district. He said daily they would hear about issues tied to students either considering su- or threatening suicide or committing suicide. So it's a real common problem. And he re- we realized that he'd bring those two groups together and, um, and overcome so- those challenges by letting them serve each other. Yeah. No, connection is so important. You know, being an operator for such a long time, that was something I always you know, tried to ingrain in my staff, uh, you know, regardless of if they were a dishwasher or 
they were the, the executive director in a community, you know, we have to create those connections for residents because even though it's a building, uh, it's also, it needs to be, like you said, a community and there needs to be that, that interaction. And so um, one of the things that you mentioned, and I, I know we didn't previously speak about this when we were, were setting things up for the podcast, but I'm curious to know how things went um, as the pandemic started, because obviously, you know, there wasn't a lot of talk about isolation. Um, you know, we talked a lot about engagement and things like that, but right now in our industry, engagement for residents is a huge talking point because we're coming out of two and two and a half years of, you know, lockdowns and, and isolation for seniors. So I'm curious as to how Seniors for Seniors worked through all of that uh, and how you were able to bring kind of that engagement for seniors in communities during the pandemic. Um, well, it, it, that's a very interesting question because we received at the end of December of 2019, is when we received our approval to be a 501c3. And that really you know, opened things up for us to really start uh, pursuing it actively. And we were engaged with a somewhat of a large organization getting ready to launch it with them. Mm -hmm. Late February, and guess what happened in March of 2020? Exactly. Um, I want to comment that those, those challenges with isolation and, and loneliness, they existed before. But Absolutely. When the hit, that's like putting them on steroids. We all, I think we all saw pictures of those, those <laughs> seniors, uh, our older adults, looking through the window at the senior center and mm -hmm. talking on a telephone to their granddaughter or, or their, ch their children or other friends or something. And we can just feel it. And, and so what it did, it just amplified the, the challenges those older adults felt. And also brought it to the attention, I, I think, of many people that, that didn't really recognize how much of a challenge it was before. And one of the things that we've always focused on is face-to-face -face interactions because, and we still feel that's the best. Absolutely, yes. We had to pivot because those mm -hmm. just opportunities just were not available. Um, and so we realized that virtual meetings, when the, when the older adults have the, have the ability and the equipment to do that, and telephone conversations work as well. Not as good, but they work. Yeah, I think it's so important to, you know, when I think about, you know, providing some sort of environment of hospitality, you know, that connection, those engagement points are so important. And it's great that there's organizations like yours that are even through the pandemic and having, like you said, to shift gears and come up with new ways of connecting, you know, you were able to keep your mission and keep pushing forward um, with that. Um, one of the things that I, I was curious to learn a little bit more about, obviously, you know, we're dealing with a number of labor issues, staffing concerns in communities. And, and so I'm curious as to, um, what maybe Senior for Seniors has been doing recently, kind of since, you know, I'm not going to say post-pandemic, because I feel like we're, we're still in that weird gray area, <laughs> but, um, you know, here in the last few months where we feel like, you know, things are starting to loosen up and communities are opening and we're able to engage again, um, what are you guys doing um, to kind of maybe help support communities that are having staffing issues? How do your volunteers fill in some of the gaps to, to kind of keep things moving uh, along in communities? Well, I would say that most people I do, that John mentioned that face-to-face -face is what they will huge on. When I'm daily reaching out to senior executives, to life enforcement personnel, on LinkedIn, most of okay, and daily or posting things up that are inviting people to participate. You know, I'm, you know, we don't want to limit, say, you know, we we're going to do in this area. We rather choke on to expand it and be, say, be, be patient with this. We're working through the, you know, these challenges too. Make mm -hmm. it big. Until I'm daily we're trying to reach out to people, wherever, and, and tell them, hey, stop with us. And then too, because our seniors can, um, seniors can be a bit fit, as I mentioned, because when our, our staff, our volunteers, Go in there. That volunteer 
could be without resident that maybe bedridden needs some company or just talks about that, you know, the cost of pendant pressure, we all know who those are. Mm -hmm. yep. Or the person that's maybe not, maybe not eating. Maybe that, that, that volunteer go in there and socially eat with that person and gain the weight back. Or just, just needs to be walking around in, in their, and the presence, as you know, as a leader yourself, the communities, just their presence around the, their, it gravitates. They want that, mm -hmm. you to come up talk to them or they put the arm around them or just give them a smile. That's something. Yeah. No, I, I remember having, um, in the early parts of my career, having a number of high school students, um, very similar to the age of your volunteer uh, pool, that worked in my dining rooms. And you could see the connection and the way residents would gravitate to, you know, the interactions with them. And it was almost as if they could do no wrong, even though, you know, as a manager, I saw all the wrong. <laughs> but um I kind of thought that maybe the things you mentioned, they make a lot of sense, right? It's the touch points that maybe a caregiver or a server um, or a resident engagement director might have done pre-pandemic. Uh, um, they're easing the burden to let them kind of take care of the nuts and bolts of operating the community. The caregiver can make sure that services are done and meds are passed and, and a senior for senior volunteer is doing the things that um, are probably just as important, if not more important, um, in just that engagement uh, and interaction with the residents. And so I, I think it's so important. And I think a lot of times it, the volunteer piece can be overlooked um, in, in our communities, uh, especially from that kind of, how do we improve our service? Well, let's, let's bring some people in to help with the engagement aspect. Um, and it winds up, like John mentioned earlier, a win-win for both. So, well, and one of the things that we do, you, you mentioned the idea of, of, of personnel challenges mm -hmm. right now, and really that, that hit hard during the COVID period and can continue because there's higher risks associated with it. Yep. And, um, and there's, uh, and there's, a lot of aspects to it, just this general labor as well, and cost of operations. And I know that's been really hard on the industry. And we don't want to put more of a burden on that because Eric knows firsthand how challenging and how busy everyone is at staffing a, a senior uh, community. Well, what we've ex what we explained is we just need to know who's interested. We need a name and a phone number, and yeah. we take it from there. And, uh, and that frees up the, the caregivers to continue to do the work that they have to do every day, every hour, every minute, and without putting additional burden on the staff. Uh, so that's an important thing for people that may be listening who uh, participate in the seniors community. Yeah, it, one thing that, that makes me curious to know, and you may or may not you know, have any information on this, um, but I'm curious to, you know, we've talked about engaging residents kind of in general. Are, are there activities or, or certain kinds of engagement that, the, that your volunteers um, or the residents themselves tend to ask for or look for when they go into communities? Because um, it would seem like, I mean, I could see, you know, do I want to hang out in the dining room? Maybe that's not as much fun as, hey, I'm going to go and you know, lead bingo or maybe do, you know, an exercise class. I could see maybe some students having some interests that they could um, express and share with, with the, the seniors they're visiting. So I'm just curious if you've got any uh, anecdotal uh, information about some of that. Well, what we do, we actually have a survey that the senior adult as well as the youth fill out other interests and quickly career interests as well. So ideally, what we try to do is mentorship with the youth and the senior adult like member of the mentorship program. So, that, so okay. you know, if we had somebody else last year was interested in the FBI, we got into contact with an FBI agent that was retired. Or okay. commenters are reading the books or join the outdoors or what. So two, though, that's kind of the, how we mesh them together. But until we, we told the seniors, the youth as well, they see another opportunity to serve out there, like the exercise class, like the Y2L or 
Mm. You go to do the bingo or just, you know, just hang out in the dining room, go for it. Because yeah. we wanted to have a woman connection with that, and the two together, of course, too, to so learn from each other and support each other. So, too, though, they put the opportunities beyond that as well. They could do it at the same time, too. You know, that's, that's actually bonus for both of them. They, they live in their value of service, and not just in our era, but years around as well. Yeah, I love that you brought up the idea of mentorship because I, you know, for me, uh, it's funny. I had a resident in a community reach out to me just, just the last couple of days asking me about uh, senior living food service, you know, in their community, they're having some issues and he's looking for resources. Um, and uh, just hearing the story and understanding like the background of that resident and how they can provide that mentorship. You know, I think it's a missed opportunity, not just for volunteers, but I think even those of us as professionals, you know, this gentleman had a, a system, master's degree in systems engineering from uh, USC. Uh, and I'm just like, well, we should get on a call so I can spend some time and learn from you on some things you see and experience every day. And maybe that'll make me better at my job. So the idea of it's not just volunteer and resident engagement, but that there's that two-way street of mentorship. I think that's such a huge, huge opportunity um, for, you know, for our seniors to feel more uh, valued in their communities and being able to give back, you know, like, like they should and like they would like. So um, I, I'm curious to know, uh, you know, obviously this is a, a podcast where we talk about hospitality and food service. And I'd love to know if you have any examples of any of your volunteers that went into uh, the, the, the food service aspect of senior living, or maybe even because of their volunteer experience, um, they started a looking into a career in senior living. I don't know about career-wise, but we did have one on my chair last year in Brandon. And he participated in our program and actually found him on LinkedIn, the same how we met. And he's just now looking in a dining room as a room server. I don't know if that's because of our service influence that, but at least opened his eyes of, hey, I enjoy the time with my senior adult. I think, no, no, hey, there's something I can fit into or something I can enjoy. As well, we have a volunteer now that's kind of last, last, the beginning of the program, you know, this year for about almost a year now. And so you see what she does. I think it's really fun is that if MC visits her older adult, they have hot chocolate together. That's something that just they started within Reagan. Okay. Well, and I would expect, because so often um, the, the high school age youth, they don't have opportunities to interact with uh, older adults. They may have grandparents, and that's wonderful when they can, but sometimes grandparents on the other side of the country and they don't have those interactions and those are just perceptions mm -hmm. about what older adults are like. And yes. When they start to interact with them and they get to know them, learn how much fun they have and how much they have to share, um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if that led to Brandon wanting to uh, work in that industry because he understands a little bit more about that generation now. Yeah. You, you know, and I don't know, um, this didn't come up in our conversations, but I feel like I could see, you know, this leading to, you know, more programming around possibly volunteers, then becoming interns in communities and working in, you know, because I think a lot of times I struggle with, you know, getting people from the hospitality industry to understand that if you start a career in senior living, that doesn't mean that you're stuck working in the kitchen, right? Or that you're stuck working in the dining room. You know, you can learn about marketing, you can learn about sales, you can learn about business operations, you can learn about leadership and management. And there's so many different opportunities there, you know, and I just, and like you said, being around the, the, the seniors, there's so many different ways that they can maybe find their, their niche, if you will, as far as a career, just from, like you said, the connection with an FBI agent or something like that. So uh, it's very, it, the whole concept of volunteers and senior living, uh, you know, I've had some experience with it, um, but not nearly to the extent that you guys are doing, which I think is great. So um, we're um, about to our time today. 
So again, I want to thank you guys for being here. Is there is there anything else you want to add that maybe we didn't get to to discuss uh, here today? Well, common uh, question is how do we get involved? And um, yeah, it's really easy. So if there, you're the best place to really go is our website, and it's www.senior the number four seniors for seniors org. And then you can learn more about it. If you go to the giving back tab, there's uh, forms to fill out to volunteer. That information comes to us and then we can take it from there. And, um, and, and so we, we want to, as many people to participate in this as possible. There's no cost to the participants, zero. Uh, zero cost to the senior uh, care centers or the, or the youth organizations. Um, now, Going along with that, of course, there's a donate button on our website too. <laughs> right. so if, if the mission touches your heart, uh, somebody's heart that's a listener to this podcast, go there and um, and share some of what you've been blessed with, so we can help uh, bless the lives of these other people. No, oh, that's great. And a quick question on that: Do you, are you guys restricted to any area of the country, or are you looking to to do this nationwide and support as many communities as possible? I say anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> as well uh, as we're also a year-round program as well. It's not just in the school year. Okay. Well, I mean, that's that's good to know because I think a lot of people might think I did at least until you just said that, that maybe this is, you know, what do we do over the summer? How do you get volunteers? But like, that's great to know that that's a, a, an opportunity as well, that it's year-round. So. And it's an interesting note also that there's actually been inquiries from India, from China, uh, from Europe from Great Britain and, uh, and where else? Canada. 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 Um, they're, they're, the word's starting to get out, but we, there's still not enough people to participate, so at least from our perspective. We want more. That's amazing. So um, I'm so glad you guys are doing this. I think it's a, a huge opportunity to, you know, not maybe, you know, to uh, not necessarily outsource the volunteering, but it is in essence outsourcing, right? It, it's a simple picking up the phone or sending an email by an activity director, resident engagement director, executive director, say, hey, we love some iSchool volunteers in our community. And then they let you guys go to work. And so I think that's a huge uh, opportunity for our senior living leaders to, to take advantage of. So um, I appreciate the work that you guys do. I appreciate your time today uh, joining me here on Tips from Trestle and best of luck. and. Uh, everything you're doing for our seniors. Thank you very much. So there you have it. Another one in the books. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. You can follow or direct message me on LinkedIn, where I'm always commenting and posting about food, hospitality, and leadership for the senior living industry. Or give me a follow on Twitter at AHFish or Instagram at Aaron H. Fish. And check out my company, Trestle Hospitality Concepts, at www.trestlehospitalityconcepts.com. I'm your host, Aaron Fish, and this has been another episode of Tips from Trestle.